some, some monkey is semi-qualified. When you so then with your perfect body so fine in form, the golden mountain above the wisdom ocean, your fame so brilliant throughout all three realms, I bow to you, supreme of saviors. Endowed with the supreme marks, your face a stainless moon, I bow to you, your color just like gold. The three realms are not like you, free from dust. I bow to you with your peerless wisdom. Savior, endowed with great compassion, omniscient as a teacher, your merit a field of oceans of virtues, I bow to you, transcendent Lord. It's purity freeing you from attachment, it's goodness freeing beings from the wretched states, exclusively ultimate supreme in meaning. I bow to the Dharma ever bringing peace. Liberated, teaching the liberating path, living well in the perfect trainings, educations, holy fields endowed with good qualities, I bow also to the Sangha community. Not committing any sinful acts, making your virtues become perfect, totally tame your own mind. That is the teaching of the Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a candle flame, like illusion, dewdrops, bubbles, like a dream, a lightning flash, and clouds, see all created things as just like that. Through this merit of attaining the exaltation of an all-seeing one defeating the enemy of faults, may I liberate migrant beings from the ocean of existence, battered by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. And then they have the whole Tibetan about them. It's why, that, why it's nice to read that when you have time is that, and this is where I'm recommending nowadays, the book, The Sublime Continuum, which was taught by the future Buddha, Maitreya, in the Tushita heaven, according to the Tibet tradition, after he came down in the form of a dog, and he took Arya Asanga, a great, one of the greatest of the Indian masters and pundits, took with him to that heaven, Tushita, which is a desire realm heaven, actually, but there is a Dharma center in it called Manorama, a Dharma, a Dharma Dara, where the being, the Bodhisattva, who's going to be the next Buddha on earth, dwells for a few tens of thousands of years while sort of seeing the world go through, different, emanating different things into the world and seeing the world go through different things. And so supposedly, supposedly the Maitreya Nata, his name, Maitreya Savior, he dictated this book to Arya Sangha, who then wrote it down in that heaven, and, or memorized it, I don't know which, they don't specify, brought it down, as a, then became a written text in India in the round 400 of the Common Era. And then uh, commented on it to a whole circle of people who created the big renaissance in Buddhism around that time. So it's called, and, but what it's, the reason I, I recommend it is that it encourages us by unpacking the whole Buddha nature idea in a different way where we really kind of feel the presence of the Shakyamuni Buddha still here with us in the world. You know? Instead of this kind of notion, Kali Yuga, dark age notion, oh, Shakyamuni, oh, yeah, it would be great if I had met him, but then he died. You know, that sort of really meat space way of thinking where we're only getting impermanence kind of as a, as, a, as a fruit. And instead, realizing that a Buddha never can leave the infinite world of the suffering beings until all the beings are free of suffering. And so that Buddha could not have left his, his coarse body continuum of, of, the, of the being he was before he was a Buddha when he was Prince Siddhartha and a great Bodhisattva, he couldn't have left that body and left this world until we were all free of suffering. So that means that he, having the knowledge of the future as well as the past, saw us through to freedom and nirvana and bliss and Buddhahood. Or he couldn't have left his active mission, let's call it. So that means we are simply it's a little bit, it could create a kind of self-indulgence and a complacency that, well, you know, we, we've already got there as far as Buddha's concerned, so I don't have to really make any special effort. It'll just happen. But maybe the way it will happen 
is we'll reach a stage in one of our lives, like we are a little bit now, where we decide we're really going to make it happen. So it isn't completely what the Japanese call, in Japanese Buddhism, they have two things. They have one called zetai tariki, which means totally other powered, the path to enlightenment. And that's where they focus on pure land. You know, that's the Japanese pure land school. And zetai jiriki, total self powered, that's the Zen, where nobody helps you and you have to 100% do it. So we'd be in the middle way there between other power. But reflecting on the Buddha nature interpreted this way, you know, the, 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 in the deepest possible way where I think it was intended by Maitreya, the next Buddha, is incredibly encouraging. Just like thinking of the golden mountain Shakyamuni, thinking of this being a planet and an era when we've heard about somebody who really transcended the, you know, life and death and became deathless and you know, opened the door to the deathless to all of us. You know. And then we can see other people, you know, other great teachers, you know, Lao Tzu, you know, Krishna, uh, the Upanishadic sages, Jesus, Moses, you know, the Hasidics, you know, the Sufis. Uh, uh, we can see them all as, in a way, opening this door. You know? It doesn't have to just be Buddhist and things. But, but Buddha was kind of the golden mountain that kind of made it all happen, actually. By morphically resonating around the planet through time and space, the feeling of freedom and relativity, and therefore the capacity of the free, wise mind to create a most beautiful relativity for the sake of all beings who dwell in it. In it. Right? Kalachak, world of Kalachakra. Best of all possible worlds. Sorry, Voltaire. OK, now, we're gonna, now, now one thing to make us really happy, since we're all totally worried about our country and our planet, is to give it away to Kalachakra. So let's read that. Om Bhadra Bhume Ahum. OK, you can make the gesture if you like. You put your rosary. You know how to do that. You put your ring fingers together. And, and uh, you clasp your other fingers in that way. And actually, when you do it in practice, I think it's kind of fun not to put the English. Just read the Sanskrit ones and then the last verse in English. Because the English of the Sanskrit is just repeating. And it's so short, you know, it's pretty obvious. So I like to do it that way. But we can read, first time we'll read both, the Sanskrit and English, OK? So Om Vajra Bhumi, you can, and if you're busy or you're holding your objects or you're in a bus, you can just put up one finger like that. Consider you're holding up the planet. You know, you don't have to, or maybe the ring finger is good. Actually, the ring finger is good because the ring finger symbolizes Mount Meru. Actually, we discovered this great thing in Richard's yoga thing. Anyway, Om Bhajra Bhume Ahum, golden ground of great power. Om Bhajra Reke Ahum, iron out, outer iron mountain all around. Om Ham Sumadya Mairave Namaha, center Mount Meru. Om Yam Purva Videhaya Namaha, east Purva Videha. Om Ram Jambudvipaya Namaha, south Jambudvipa. Om Vam Uttarakurave Namaha, north Uttarakuru. Om Lam Aparagodaniya Namaha, West Aparagodaniya. Om Rahave Namaha, Rahu in the east. Om Suryaya Namaha, sun in the south. Om Chandraya Namaha, moon in the north. Om Kalagnaye Namaha, Kalagni in the west. I see the jewel universe, massed with all good offerings, with body, speech, mind, possessions of self and others, and our gathered stores of virtues, past, present, future. And I offer all to Lama, patron deity, and three jewels. Mercifully, please take it and grace me with your blessings. Guru idam mandala kam niryatayami. Actually, I don't know how that happened. Usually, we, we say idam guru mandala kam niryatayami. I don't know who reversed it, and I didn't notice it editing. <laughs> I've, or they changed it after I had edited it. I don't know that. But I, usually everybody does this. Idam guru ratna mandala kam niryate. Idam guru ratna mandala kam niryate. Idam guru idam This must be a version 
Some lama must have done it, but I think personally I prefer it. Idam Guru Ratna. Oh, here they have oh, here they have Guru Idam Ratna. You see? In the shorter version here. So at least they have Ratna here. Somehow Ratna got left off there. That's no good. So I would prefer it if you do Idam Guru Ratna Mandala Kam because Idam means this. And this means the planet. And you know, a modern mandala offering of this type, although you can make this thing with the hand and the fingers, because that's a tradition. But the ideal thing to think about is that you have the entire planet in your hands. And you're ever offering the, the green planet with the atmosphere, the stratosphere, and the whole thing. And the distance from the sun and moon, you're giving the whole thing away. So you're turning off your worrying about, about, the, about the world. All right? So then, they have long mandala offering. We don't need that right now. Then notice here they have this gate, gate, paragate, parasam gate, bodhi, soha. That's the Tibetan pronunciation of swaha, it's soha. And um, they, uh, so that's just the mantra of the Heart Sutra. They don't print the whole, they, we didn't put the whole thing in there. I didn't really get to do this the way I really like, but never mind. Then, oh, then here's a version of Heart Sutra, okay. And this version of Heart Sutra, I have been trying unsuccessfully for many, many years with all Tibetans. You see on page 9, where you have the Heart Sutra, and then the mantra, they consider Tadyata as part of the mantra. But Tadyata means as follows. That's what it means. Tadyata. Like that, as follows. So I prefer Om. But um, they won't give it up. I don't know why. Somebody in the long transmission from to India to Tibet, they, who didn't know Sanskrit, thought that Tadyata, which means as follows. Here's the mantra, as follows. <laughs> Om Gate Gate. That the Tadyata was part of the mantra, and Tibetans won't give up, which is kind of sweet of them. They want to really continue the, the um, tradition, you see. That's the lunch bell. Oh, that's the lunch bell? OK. Now, I wanted to go on afterwards, but then I was outvoted. Well, you can do whatever you want. We can? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Well, I will come back myself at 2 p.m. And I'll, I will optionally, we'll have a, a what, it's a, just 12 now. And we will, we will because I'd like to make some progress. And maybe, maybe by then I can work a little more and figure this thing. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can work, I can do, make a little more progress on the, on the short one and maybe print the first part of what I'm trying to do. So then we can always begin each session with that. And as it will grow over the thing, it'll keep growing. And we'll finally get there. Or... The other thing that I would love to do, actually, but maybe it's overwhelming to you. Doesn't everybody, how many of you are part of the Kalachakra group? I mean, or how many of you are not part of the Kalachakra group? And, and you have, but you have the Kalachakra initiation, right? So you'd like to be. So or they're going to do it merely in the future. Yeah. We have well, OK, OK. But what I'm saying, fine, then they can join. And what I'm saying is, if someone would give them the web, how to get on the thing, yeah. then without us having to print huge thing, you can have the long sadhana, which is the English translation of what the Dalai Lama and the monks chant, which from the beginning on the group, I wanted to go over with people. It's page well, right? you know, it's big type. Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> My point is, if we go over it together, and I can, we can, I can skip as we go. If we try to do that in these three days, when you then have a short one, which would be only like eight, six, eight pages, which is better than, which is, this, it doesn't cancel the sixth session. It's better than the sixth session. And if you can do it once a day, you will have a feeling. Because otherwise, you see, the sixth session thing, the problem with it is, let me take a couple more minutes. I know it's a lunch bell, but they'll keep it. Uh, the problem is with sixth session is that there's nothing really to help you 
feel you're in the palace and you feel you're in a different world. And that's what's key, that you have that at least the trigger of that, even though the huge detail of it, and it's especially a hold of mantras in every, every atom of your body type of thing. I mean, that's, of course, that takes a long time. You have to go on a long retreat there, like many months, you know. I think the Lenu retreat of Kala Chakra of just the mind mandala building, I think it takes the monks to, uh, at least two to three months, which they've all done. All those Namgyal monks have done that. And um, because it's the so many mantras. And, and you see, even the number, counting up the number of mantras, whereas when we do it at such a retreat, I, I hear I'm in confession, <laughs> we try to race through the sadhana when we do it two or three times a day. And then, after racing through that, we then start racing out through the mantras. But actually, you were supposed to do the sadhana, visualizing yourself in the palace. But then only when you get tired of doing that, you then start reciting mantras. So then it's much longer and slower to accumulate the mantras, if you follow. Because you're not, the main thing is not accumulating the mantras. But, you know, we do what we can, you know. And so the, 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 the important thing is, to access the space of that, even if you don't have yet the detail, but get to feel what it is to move into another universe. And it's not just like you go to the conference center and then go back to Delos, and you're, they're all on the property of, the, of Menla. No, you, you dissolve the whole planet. You gave it away then. then but you, you dissolve your world picture of the planet completely, and then you start from scratch making a big bang. You create, that's why creation stage is so much correct than, than generation, you know. You, I mean, that, of course, like maybe they're connecting generation to genesis, people who are like completely hypnotized by that word. But, but, uh, but you create, you're creating. So you create a world. So the Kalatakra Mandala Palace is inside another, a, a world. And the, the, it's, its way of touching the ordinary world are the eight cemeteries, the, the charnel grounds, which are outside. That's how it touches the ordinary world. But it, it, it absorbs the ordinary world, this universe of yours. So it's, you create it as an alternative universe, which you enter. And then you feel yourself the kind of responsible being, the king, queen of that, of that world. And you have these 722 sort of semi-divine beings. And then they're all beings that sort of go out and they become Mars and Mercury and Jupiter and whatever, you know what I mean? They become the days of the month, the 360 days of the year, et cetera, et cetera. They, they become all of these things in, a, in an ordinary world, but they are kind of all in the perfect thing where every part of it is clear light. Every part of it is aware of itself being clear light and yet is dancing and manifesting its beautiful being for the benefit of everyone else. So it's like a, it's like a Buddha verse vision, and then, and all of that second, after the, where you've dissolved yourself into the clear light of the void, and then, then you arise, that's called the mandala triumph, where you create a universe that can triumph over the universe of senseless suffering. Because a world where beings are just driven by impulse to grab at what's in front of them, and then, and be dissatisfied about it very quickly, you know, the, the, Musa Shokala turns to Kaka, you know, and right away, you know. And so that world is meaningless, and beings go up and down in it, and they have no idea that they can get off it. And many cultures teach like that. You're just stuck in it. You know, you go back and become fertilizer in the earth, the more materialistic ones. The other ones, you go to a happy hunting ground, maybe, and somebody sends you up uh, some, some deer burgers. You know, your you're, you're offspring, you know, if you're lucky or something. Then eventually you get have complicated heavens and things. But uh, basically, that's just a cycle. You know? I mean, and it's meaningless. The materialists are right. In that sense, the samsaric world is meaningless and purposeless. But if you give it the purpose, that because you understand there's a way of being Buddha and really being happier than, and making others really happy, then, you, then that becomes purposeful. OK? So that's what we're working toward in these three days. And I'll be back at 2. And uh, have a nice lunch. OK.
Thank you. Sorry, I went a little late.